objectives are we're going to discuss the slope of a tangent line to a graph. The slope of a tangent line, let's pretend the graph looks like this. And say there's a point here, correct? Tangent means it touches in one spot. I really need two of your desks back so I can take my mask off, but that's okay. Uh, tangent means it touches in one spot. So, that could be a tangent. Let's pretend it touched in one spot. It's, it's a little bit of a thick line, okay? But let's pretend it touched in one spot on this graph right there. Or it could be, or it could have been like a little bit more slanted, like here and then here. Still tangent, right? Still touching in one spot. So tangent just means in one spot. Now the easiest way to find the tangent slope we're going to figure out is to actually find the derivative of something. That's what we're going to do. We're not doing derivatives right now, but limits can get us there as well. We're investigating a limit using a table, and we're investigating a limit using a graph. Now remember, limits are not what the value is at that point, it's what it's approaching. We've talked about this before. So remember, if I gave you a graph like this, I'll pretend that's 1 and this is 2, okay? What would f of 2 be in this case? What would f of 2 be? Mm -mm. Does not exist. Because it's an open dot. f of 2 is literally what's y when x is 2, correct? So in this case, it would be does not exist. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll throw another dot up here. We'll say this is 2. In this graph, f of 2 would be what? 2, correct? So f of 2 would be 2. We agree with that statement, yes? The limit is not what the value is. So even though the value is 2, that's great. The limit is what it approached from the left and the right, and it has to be the same value, correct? So from the left of this graph, I'm approaching 1. And from the right of the graph, I'm approaching 1. So the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x would be 1. Is this graph continuous? Continuous would mean I can take my pencil, draw the whole graph, never lift it up. Could I do that? No. So this graph isn't continuous, and it makes sense, because if from the left and the right it's not approaching the same value at 2, we're going to have to lift our pen at some point. Okay? So the limit can exist and the value can exist, but the graph can still not be continuous. Now, if it's a continuous graph, if it's just like this, That's one, let's say. If it's just a continuous graph, my limit would be at 2 would be 1, and my value at 2 would be 1. If it's continuous, the value at the dot, where it would be, would be the same value as the limit, correct? Because it's going to hit, the limit from the left is going to approach 1, then at 2 I'm going to be at 1, so I'll circle the dot, then at the right I'm going to be at 1, so I'm going to keep going, right? So if your limit and your value are the same, it's actually a continuous graph. We're going to do a lesson on that as well. Okay, so here it says, definition of a limit. In math, a limit is the value that a function or sequence approaches as the input or index approaches some value. Limits are essential to calculus and mathematical analysis in general and are used to define continuity, derivatives, and integrals, which is what we're going to get to as we go along. So, we have to express this in words so that you guys actually know what... Um, the wording is of a limit. So here, we're going to say, express the limit. So this is, how would we say this in words? We'd say the limit, not sure why I didn't capitalize the, but whatevs, I'm a rebel. The limit as x approaches, that's what the arrow means, negative 1 on x squared minus 1 over x plus 1 is equal to negative 2. That's all it means, right? We actually did ones like this. So the limit, what you always check first is, can I just plug the value in for all the x's and get an answer? Okay. If I plug negative 1 in, I'm going to say, uh-oh. Why? Because you're going to 
my denominator is going to be zero, which is a problem, correct? So whenever I go to do a limit, so I'm going to do this limit, limit as x approaches negative 1 of x squared minus 1, the first thing I will always do when I get a limit is attempt to plug the value in. If I can plug the value in and there's no, no problems, boom, it's a continuous function and that's the answer. Okay? If I go to plug this one in, though, I know there's an actual problem. There's an, there's an issue. It could be an asymptote. It could be a point of discontinuity. Okay? Points of discontinuity are called removable, um, removable points, points or jump discontinuities. So they're called removable discontinuities or jump discontinuities. And the reason why they're different instead of just points is a removable discontinuity is when you have like a graph and you have like an open dot. Boom. I just removed it. I removed a point and now it's not continuous, right? A jump discontinuity is when you like go here and then you jump up here and it carries on. So it's not con continuous, but there's a jump between them. That's it. So they just use different words. Instead of points of discontinuity, they call it removable or a jump. Okay? So the way we would know if it's an asymptote is if when we go to do this, it doesn't cancel off. Then it's an asymptote from a rational expression, correct? If the factor on the top and the bottom cancels, it's a point of discontinuity, which could be a removable or jump. In this case, if it's a rational, it would be a removable, right? You draw the rational or the line, it would have an open dot. We know that from 30-1. So, if I go to plug it in and I get a zero in my denominator, my problem is this x plus 1 and I need it to go away. Like, get out of my life. Go away. If you go away, I can plug in the negative 1, my life is good, correct? Right now, life sucks because I can't plug it in, I get a zero. So, I always try and do something so that I can maybe get it to go away. Does anyone have any ideas what I could do? Yeah. Yeah, the top is a difference of squares, so we can factor it. Now, this is the thing. People don't know when they have to keep writing limits or when they can make it go away. It's very easy to know. You write a limit, the word limit with x approaches negative 1. You'll continue to write it until you actually sub it in. When you sub in for the variable, the limit the word just goes away. Okay? So the limit is telling you what to sub in for x. Once you sub in for x, the limit goes away. It doesn't, you don't need to tell yourself anymore. So I'm not going to sub in for x, so I'm going to have to rewrite it again. So I'm going to go to the limit as x approaches negative 1. And then on the top I get x plus 1, x minus 1 over x plus 1. We know now it's a point of discontinuity, or in this case a, a removable discontinuity. Please cancel off. Now is my problem gone? And if my problem's gone, I can just sub in, right? And the moment I sub in, the limit goes away because I've subbed in the value. I don't need to tell myself, hey, x is this all the time because you'll have filled it in. So because I'm going to plug negative 1 in now for x, I don't have to write the limit part. It drops off because now I'm going to go negative 1 minus 1 and my answer is negative 2, which is the exact same as what they have up there. Okay? So your homework is going to be culminated as we go along. Um, I put homework throughout so that you know what AP problem actually fits what we just learned. So it could help you out if you're kind of stuck. Okay? So in your homework, you would try AP practice problem 7. Okay? I'll type these into the homework thing online, but that would be one thing. Okay? So here we have, we can use a table to better understand what it means for a function to have a limit as it approaches C. So here, we have 2x plus 5. 2x plus 5 is what type of function? It's a linear. Is a linear continuous? Usually. Usually. It should be. Right? So, if a linear is continuous, which it will be, from the left, from the right, and at that value, it'll approach the same thing. Correct? Because if it's continuous from the left, it'll approach it. At that value, it'll approach it. From the right, it'll approach it. Just keep going. Right? Boom, hit it. Boom, hit it. Boom, hit it. Carry on. Right? So, we know that actually, because this is continuous, I wouldn't even have to use this table. I could just plug it in, couldn't I? Because f of 2 will actually be the same as the limit. Do we agree? Mm -hmm. f of 2 should be the same as the limit because it's approaching the same thing and hitting the same thing. So I could, if I didn't want to do a table, I wouldn't have to. I could go, whenever a function is continuous, I could just plug it in because there's no problem. So I have this, 2x plus 5. And the moment I plug it in, I don't have to write the limit anymore. 2 times 2 plus 5, which is 9. So I know this bad boy is going to approach 9, technically, right? I know from the left it's going to be 9, from the right it's going to be 9, the limit added is 9, f of 2 is 9, everything's 9 because it's continuous. Okay? 
Now I have my notes here because I didn't want to have to make a few mistakes. But what we can do is, why would I pick 1 1.9, 1.999, 1.999, 1.999, and then 2.0001, 2.001, 2.001, 2.001? Why would I pick those values? What do you think? Right. So I'm getting so close to 2 from the left and so close to 2 from the right, it'll be an insignificant amount. We can basically figure out it's probably going to be 9. Right? Exactly. So 1.99 seems close to 2, but it's actually a little further away. 1.99999, that baby rounds to 2. And the 10th, 100th, uh, like, we're getting real close to 2. From the left, right? And people are like, I don't know what's left. Well, here's 2. Left would be really close on the left, so it would be 1.99999. And then really close to 2 on the right would be like almost 2, but not saying 2, right? So the closest you can go is like 2.00001. That would round to 2. From the 10th spot, 100th, 1,000th, right? 10,000. So I picked really close values on both sides. So we could just see, if I pick these values, what am I approaching? What am I getting closer and closer to? So you could always use a table if you were stuck. Always. So when I plug 1.99 in for x into that equation, I got 8.98. such minutes. Okay. Then when I plugged 1.999 in, I got 8.998. When I plugged 1.9999 in for it, I got 8.9998. Then I got 8.99998. 2, I didn't, when I plug 2 in, I get 9, but it's, I can only plug in 2 because it's continuous, correct? So when I plug in 2, I actually get 9. I plugged in 2.0, I get 9.0002, 9 9.0002, 9.0002, 9.002. So as I'm getting closer and closer and closer to 2, I'm really getting closer and closer to 9, correct? And actually, f of 2 is 9. We know this. Because it was a continuous function, I could actually plug it in, correct? If there was a point of discontinuity there, if there was an open dot at 2, so say on the top of this function I had x minus 2 and on the bottom of this function I had x minus 2, so there technically would be an open dot there, a removable discontinuity. Um, then I wouldn't be able to find it and I'd have to look from the left and the right. Yeah? Exactly. From the left to the dot, yes. And from the right means from the right side approaching, yeah. So you're technically heading, when you're going from the right you're heading left, when you're going from the left you're heading right. Yeah. So this here is getting closer and closer. So I can write this, pay attention, I can go the limit as x approaches 2, and then I can do this from the left. So if the negative comes after the number, that means from the left. It's going to explain it right below. So the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of 2x plus 5, what was it approaching when I approached from the left? It got closer and closer to 9, correct? Then I have the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x. What is it getting closer and closer to? 9. So if from the left and from the right they're actually approaching the same value, then the limit at just that value exists. So then I can say the limit as x approaches just 2 of 2x plus 5 is 9. So if from the left it was approaching 7 and the right it was approaching 8, then the limit at the value wouldn't exist. The, the left and the right have to approach the same value. If you don't have a textbook, go grab it. Oh, and then here it says, nine, now try problem 9. So now that you all have your textbooks, I can show you what I mean. So if you go to 1.1, 1 .1, if you go to 1.1 1 .1 in your textbook, so it would be page, page, page 86. So if you look at page 86, 
Those are the problem questions. So if you look and it says, now try problem nine. Problem nine are from the problem sections, which are white. So if you look at page 86, those are all questions and they're white. Correct? Now flip ahead to page 90. The green ones say what at the top? AP practice problem, correct? So if it just says, now try problem 9, that would be in the white section, just the problem 9. Okay. Up here, I wrote, try AP practice problem 7. That is the what? The green. You will have assigned way more green than you will have assigned the white ones, because the green ones are the AP practice as well. Um, and I'm assigning the minimal amount. In the white section, you can practice way more. So if you are a lost soul, please go practice in the white section, knowing that they only give the answers to the odd questions. If you do even ones, you can come to me. I have the answers for those ones. But for some reason, in the calculus textbooks, and you'll see it in university as well, they give only the answers to the odd questions. I think it's so that they can assign the even as well. Like as a teacher, you could assign the even and you wouldn't have the answers to it. Um, but the odd are the ones that actually have answers. So if you want to go and practice more of them because you're like, I need help, um, then practice in the white section the odd numbers, okay? Because then you can actually check the answers. If for some reason you check the, you do the even and you want to know the answers, you can message me. I do have the answers to the even in my one textbook, okay? So AP practice problem is the green section. If it just says problem, it's the white. Does that make sense? So you understand? Okay. So here's the one-sided limit in a little summary. It says the left-handed limit, X is C approaches, um, this is C from the left, is the limit from the left. And this is C from the right, it's the limit from the right. It's just the notation that they use. Okay? So we're going to look at this table. What I want you to do is this one here, if you look, paying attention, this one has the limit as x approaches 0. Now, unlike the last one, the last one I could just go plug in and get the answer, correct? This one, can I plug the 0 in? No, if I plug the 0 in, I have a problem because my denominator will be 0. So I have either an asymptote or I have point discontinuity on this graph somewhere, correct? Now, what we did in the past, if you look back two examples, is we factored it, canceled it off, then we could plug in, correct? Or last example, we could just plug in because it was a continuous function. It was awesome, correct? This one, however, I can't factor it to get rid of the, Z, the x on the denominator, and I can't just plug in because I have the 0. So my point when I said to you, you can always use a table no matter what if you're stuck. You can always use a table. This is an exact example where you could always use a table for this one. So I would have to go from the left of 0. So if 0 was on a number line, from the left of 0 would be really, really close to 0 negative. From the right of 0 would be really, really close to 0 positive. So that's why I picked 0 decimal 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 and negative 0 decimal 0, 0, 0, 1. Now I want you guys to get the values. So how would you get the values? There's two different ways you could do this. Okay? The first way, plug this equation into your y equals. You are allowed a calculator for half of your AP final in the calculator section, and half of it is not calculator. My final, I'm still deciphering whether I'm going to let you know. If you have no calculator, if you have no calculator, then I have to give you easier questions. Keep that in mind. So. Okay. Everyone type e to the x minus 1 over x into your y equals. Yes, no, L e is if you go second, ln, ln. Do you know where there's log button down there? Log is log base 10, we know that, right? Ln is log base E. And we use lons a lot in calculus, so it's log base E. So if you look behind the ln, there's an e to the x. Do you see it? Okay. So you're going to go to your y equals, and in your, my calculator, 
is no longer free. I have to get someone to fix my calculator on my computer. I'm good. It's no longer free? On my computer. So you go to y equals, and I would make it be a fraction if you can. So remember how to make the fraction is you'd go alpha y equals enter, or if you use the fancy calculators, you could go um, alpha link, the button right beside it. Anyways, the fraction pops up. If you have the older calculators, you will have to put the top in brackets and the bottom in brackets. Okay? So either way, you're going to go second ln, second ln, which is below log, e is going to pop up and a little arrow is going to pop up and you're going to put it to the x, correct? If you have the older calculators, you're going to have to close the bracket. Minus 1 divided by x. Does everyone have it in their calculators? And I would press zoom 6 because I have no idea what window you have sitting on that calculator. So I just do zoom 6. And you might be able to see the calculator. See the calculator. You can see it. It's in front of your face. See the graph. Okay? Now, we know x values and we want y's. How do we get, how do we get y's and we know x's? Second trace value. So go second trace value, type in negative 0 0.01. And if your equation was typed in correctly, you should get 0 0.995. And you're going to do it again. Second trace value, negative 0 0.001. I like <laughs> <laughs> So as long as you can go second trace value, you can get any values. As long as you know how to type the equation into your calculator correctly. So, let's say limit from the left, limit from the right. So our limit from the left and limit from the right have to be the same, approaching the same thing, right, in order for our limit to exist. So we go limit as x approaches 0 from the left of e to the x minus 1 over x. What is it approaching when I'm approaching from the left? What am I getting closer and closer to on my y? 1. And then if I do the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of e to the x minus 1 over x, what am I getting closer and closer to? 1 again. Because 1.000005 1. is 1. Now from the left and the right, are they approaching the same thing? Yes. yes. So if they're approaching the same thing from the left and the right, I can go the limit as x approaches 0 without left and right is 1. And I don't even have to have a clue what this, cal what this graph looks like. I just know from the left and from the right, they're both approaching 1. So it's probably an open dot. And here's this one. Now try problem 13. That's the white part of the book. AP practice problem 6 is the green part of the book. Okay. Sine x over x. I'm not going to tell you guys how to do this one. I want you, using a table... Getting closer to zero, hmm, what numbers could I use? The same numbers I used above, because those are getting closer to zero, correct? And I want you to see from the left and from the right what sine x over x is approaching. Okay? So basically it's the same table as above, but now instead of using e to the x minus 1 over x, you're using sine x over x. Thing about calculus, your calculator will always be in radians. We don't do degrees anymore. They go Release them. 
Yeah. So when your calculator resets, it'll reset into radians. Don't go changing it to degrees anymore. It will stay in radians for calculus. So go type those in. Okay, when we look from the left... What's it approaching? One. From the right, zero from the right, it's approaching one. So we can say that the limit as x approaches just zero, that's sine x over x approaches. Then here we have, now try problem 15, AP practice problem 8. And in your homework on Google Classroom, I'll put all the problems together and all the AP Prax problems together and say what's your homework for today. But I just put them underneath so that you know what section they hit in case you're stuck. Okay. So here, there are three different functions above for f, g, and h. f is the first, g of x is the second, and h of x is the third. Um, so what's f of c, g of c, and h of c? So we know f of c is actually equal to l. Do you see there's an l here? And here's c. So f of c is equal to l. This graph is what? What would we say about this graph? It is continuous. It just keeps going, correct? g of c doesn't equal l. It equals something else up here this time. So this graph actually has a jump discontinuity-ish. Um, it has a removable discontinuity because it's pulled out, technically not a jump because it's not partitioned. But it's not continuous either way, correct? Because the graph goes, I pick my pencil up, put a dot, and then carry on. So if at any point in time you pick your pencil up to keep drawing the graph, even if you're slightly dragging it along, she's not continuous, okay? So this is not continuous graph. And then this one is just a point of discontinuity or removal discontinuity, but there is no H of C. It's not defined. There is no coordinate on there. Correct? And that's totally fine as well. But once again, it's not continuous. Now, what can I say about the limit of all three of these graphs, though? Even though F of C and G of C and H of C are not the same, what's the limit of all of these? They approach L. This one approaches L from the left. This one approaches L from the right. This one approaches L from the left, L from the right. L from the left, L from the right. So for actually all of these, these ones all equal L. Every single one of them. Even though the graphs look different, they all equal L. Correct? The only graph that is continuous, though. So for it to be continuous, my limit has to be the same as what? Any idea? In order for a graph to be continuous, the value. So the limit actually has to equal the value, correct? From the left, from the right, and the value have to be the same. So this is the only one that's continuous. From the left, from the right, I approach L, and at C, I'm at L, correct? So the only one that's continuous is F of X, and it's continuous because the limit as X approaches C of F of X actually equals F of C. They're both equal to L. So to prove continuity, which is going to be a lesson later, but we always find it really easy because we learned about it way before the lesson. To prove continuity, your limit, as you approach from the left and the right, has to be the same as at that value. So from the left and the right, here, I'm approaching L, so the limit is L, and the value is L. This one, however, is not continuous, because from the left and the right, for G of X, I'm approaching L, but G of uh, C is not L, it's some other value, correct? So it's not continuous. And this one, my limit is L, but H of C doesn't even exist. So your value at it and the limit have to be the exact same value in order for it to be continuous. Why? Because from the left I'd approach L, at it I have L, so I dot the dot, and then I carry on from it I'm L. So I wouldn't actually be picking up my pencil. Okay. So here it says, this suggests that the limit of a function as x approaches c does not depend on the value at c or lack of value at all. It's literally just from the right or left. Because all three of those, the limit was l, but what the value was at c didn't matter. 
One, it was actually L. One, it was something else totally. One, it didn't even exist, correct? So the limit doesn't depend on the value at that actual C at all. It's just what it's approaching. And that's what you have to wrap your head around with. It's approaching, approaching, approaching. That's what the limit is. Carry on. So we're going to use a graph to investigate the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x. So let's first sketch it. are called piecewise functions. This is a piecewise function. And you talked about piecewise functions a lot. Well, I don't know if you say a lot. You talked about piecewise functions in grade 11 when we talked about absolute value graphs. You had to make piecewise functions of them. All piecewise functions mean is that normally, example, 3x plus 1, normally it's a line with a domain of XCR. Or a domain from negative infinity to positive infinity, because in calculus we use interval notation, we don't use set. So the key thing here is normally 3x plus 1 is, is from negative infinity to positive infinity, correct? And normally y equals 10 is just a horizontal line, xer as well, correct? Piecewise functions just say, hey, I love that the domain is there. That's great. Good. Yeah, uh huh. Awesome. I'm not letting it be there. I'm now saying that this graph actually follows 3x plus 10 for every value except for 2. That's it. And then it's 10 at 2. Done. So this is the horizontal line of y equals 10. It just only appears at x equals 2. So is it actually a horizontal line? No, it's a coordinate. It's 210. That's all it is. So we know on this graph, this right here means 2 and 10. So I go to 2 and 10. And I got myself a dot. Okay. Then it says, okay, 3x plus 1 exists the entire graph except for at 2. So what does that mean? The easiest way to draw this is draw 3x plus 1. And then when x is 2, I just have a what? A, an open dot. Yeah, a removable discontinuity. So, how do I sketch a line? The quickest way to sketch a line, because you haven't done it since NOM, is this is your y-intercept. So we start there. Your y-intercept is like, hey, start, start here, please. It's like the starting point. In grade 10, your y-intercept is like, this is where we start. Go there. So I go to 1. Boom. There I am. I start there. I'm going to use a different color because I'm a rebel. And then in grade 10, oh my gosh, when I used to teach grade 10, it was like heartbreaking. You guys, everyone would be like, yes, one. And they'd sketch one, and then they'd start at zero, zero for the slope. And I'm like, what the heck did you put the other dot there for? <laughs> and they're like, I don't know. It does zero, zero. That's what we do. And I was like, no, here's your starting point. You stand in there, child. You stand in there. And now we use the slope from there. Not zero, zero. They'd be like, okay, okay, so why is that four? And then slope from zero, zero. And I'm like, oh, whole day of it. It was just. Good. But you're not there. You're not there. You can do this. I believe in you. So we have y equals 3x plus 1. This is our starting point, And this is 3 over 1. So I rise before I run, just like getting out of bed. If not, you look stupid. You're just running in bed. OK. So I rise, and then I run. So I rise 3 and run 1 from my starting point that I drew. Not 0, 0. Yeah? OK. So I'm going to rise three, boom, 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 run one, bam, rise three, boom, 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 run one, and then what am I going to do? Open dot, rise three, boom, 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 over one, good chow. Okay, now you're also taught in grade 10 that you can do the complete opposite direction, correct? Instead of rising three and running one, 
you can actually go down three and left one. Why is that? Because it would be a negative, negative, and a negative, a negative would just be a positive, right? So this could have been like this, and it would be the same thing, right? So that's why you can always, when you were doing slope in grade 10, you could always just do the opposite. Because sometimes people would be at the very top at like 10, and they're like, I want to rise three and run one, but I have, there's no graph left. I'm, and then they like make their own graph up here, and then draw, and I'm like, no. So if you're at the very tippy top, please don't draw more. <laughs> go opposite direction and work your way back, right? Because if I go down three, one, two, three, left one, I'm still landing on that line. Down three, one, two, three, left one, still landing on that line. Oh boy. Pretend that's straight. Boom. There's my graph. Is this graph continuous? No, why not? Because there's an open dot, but why? What reasoning do I have that it's not continuous? Because f of 2 is not continuous. <laughs> yes, because f of 2, f of 2 is actually 10. But the limit as x approaches 2 is actually what? 7. It's 7. <laughs> I agree with that statement. So, what is the value of f of 2? The value of f of 2 is 10. Okay? Then we go from the left and the right to prove that the limit actually exists at that value, right? We always have to show from the left and the right. So the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of f of x is actually, as I'm approaching from the left and hitting 2, what y am I approaching? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x so now I'm coming from the opposite direction. I'm working my way this way. It's still approaching 7. So then I can say, therefore, the 3 dot therefore will be used a lot in mathematics. Limit as x approaches 2 of f of x equals 7. Now, I can say, this is way before the lesson, but we're going to be so good at this by the time the lesson comes, you'll be like, why are we learning this lesson? Because we learned continued continuity before. I just teach it before, I just do. It feels wrong not to teach it right now. So, therefore, let's put three dots. Why am I doing this? Um, the graph is not continuous. The graph of the f of x is not continuous because... f of 2 does not equal what? The limit as x approaches 2 of f of x. They're not the same. And if they're not the same, I'm picking my pencil up. Correct? Because from the left, I'm drawing to 7. Then I pick my pencil up at 2, I'm at 10. Then I come back down, bring my pencil back down, and carry on from 7. Right? So the limit approaches 7. At 2, I'm at 10. I'm going to have to pick my pencil up. From the left, I'm going to draw to 7. Then at 2, I'm going to go put a dot at 10. Then I'm going to come back down here to 7 and continue drawing. If I'm having to lift my pencil, it ain't continuous. Right? So here it says, there is no single number from the left and from the right. The value of f of x approaches it gets close to c. We say that there's no limit. So in this case, did you see how this one approached the same value from the left and the right? The limit existed. It was at 7. But if from the left, it approached 7. And from the right, it approached 10. Then... That's right, from the left it approaches 7 and from the right it approaches 10. Those are true, but the limit at that value doesn't exist. Okay? That's all this bullet says. Then you try AP practice problem 4. Okay, let's look at this one. We're going to sketch it. We have, um, as x approaches 0, f of x. Well, here we have, this one's different than the last one. This one says, draw the line y equals x until I hit 0. Then we have to stop. Is it equal at zero? No, so I still find the value at zero, but I'm just going to have an open dot. Then it says, okay, now draw a horizontal line, a y equals one line, but only from zero onwards. That's what this means. So we're going to sketch that. I don't know why that just moved, but whatever. Okay. 
So I'm going to put this on here, but then I'm going to erase it because I'm going to do it wrong. Now the line y equals x, or f of x equals x is the identity line, correct? It's when it's 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, correct? Don't go off of what I'm doing right now because it's, I'm going to be erasing some of this. Okay, so that's this line. We agree? That's the identity line. The identity line is 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 0, 0. It's the line that's inverse reflected on in 30 dash 1. I'm wrong because I can only draw it from 0 and less. So what must go away? The whole right hand side of this would go away, correct? So I instead am going to delete that. Hopefully. Go away. There we go. Go away. Jokes on me after you draw the whole thing. Just kidding. Okay. So I know that I end at 0, 0, technically, correct? This graph is going to end at 0, 0, but with an open dot. So even though it doesn't exist there, I still draw it as an endpoint. I just have an open dot there. Then negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, negative 3, negative 3, negative 4, negative 4, and boom. Now I've drawn this portion. Then I have the line y equals 1. We agree this isn't just a coordinate. Last time it was a coordinate. Why was it a coordinate last time? Because it was just x equals 2. It was just one value. At 2, I had the horizontal line at 10. Well, that means I just have a point at 2, 10. This one, I have a horizontal line at y equals 1 when it's 0 and higher. So y equals 1 is a horizontal line across, right? Like this. But I want it greater than 0. So I still use 0. I just have a open dot and then draw it right. Is this graph continuous? Is there even a value at 0? No. Neither of them had an equal sign on it. If one of them had an equal sign, one of them would have a closed dot. That's the only difference. Okay. So the limit... Shitting. As x approaches 0 from the left of f of x, what am I approaching from the left? Yeah, so from the left, from the left, I'm approaching y equals 0. Then the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of f of x, use yellow, I'm approaching what? 1. Ruh row. Are those true statements? Yeah. yeah. From the left, boom. From the right, boom. The only problem is the limit at zero doesn't exist. But can it exist from the right and the left? Absolutely. The only time it can't exist from the right and the left is if there's actually no graph on the left. So, like, let's pretend, so I just want to side note you. So if the graph was like this, and this was all the graph was, and this was 1, from the left of 1, there is no graph. So there'd be no limit from the left because there physically is no graph from the left. That's the only time you won't get from the left or from the right is if there's no graph there. Other than that, they exist. Like this one exists. The only catch, though, is, therefore, the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x does not exist. And I'm not going to make you do the table for it. Because you can see it. And then we just have a theorem at the back to discuss, and then you're, you have practice problems to try. So this one here just says the theorem of a limit of limit L of a function y equals f of x as x approaches the number c exists if and only if both one sided limits exist at c. So if from the left and from the right you equal the same thing, then the limit at that value exists. You will get theorems out of the yin-yang from university. They theorem you and proof you the whole way through. So you have to get used to reading this and not just blocking it out or being like, I have no clue what the heck this is. I don't care. I would have to go home and re-listen, re-read it and be like, now decipher what the heck this is saying. Okay, I get it. But you have to get used to that because that's what you get in math. You get terminology, you get theorems, you get proofs. So this one here, it says a one-sided limit is used to describe the behavior of a function f of x equals square root x minus 1 near x equals 1. Since the domain is of 
if this is greater than and equal to 1, the left-handed limit makes no sense. There is no left-handed limit to 1, like I was explaining before. The right-handed limit would approach 0, correct? As I'm approaching this from the left, or from the right, it would approach y equals 0. The left, there isn't 1. So there'd be no point in saying this. So the limit at 1 wouldn't be there. Okay? So here's your last problems to try. This homework here is not actually homework. This is just me saying what other questions, if you felt the need to go that route, you could do. So all of the ones throughout the notes are homework. This here, my friend, not homework. But I just wrote questions just in case people wanted other practice questions if you felt me. Okay? Thank you.